Welcome back to Olotita. I hope that you're having a wonderful morning, evening, or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And I'm so grateful that you're sharing some time with me today. As always, our channel is focused on this concept of wholeness. Wholeness of your mind, wholeness of your body, and wholeness of your spirit. And we really infuse every video with ideas of inspiration of gratitude because those two are really necessary for having a joyful life. So today I want to do a review overview of wholeness tools revolved around creating more positivity in your mind space, because whether you're happy and you're just trying to create more wholeness in your life or you're sick and you're trying to get healthy or you're um, looking for another job or you're having trouble in your relationship or a slew of other things, whatever brought you here, right? Whatever reason you're here in front of me today, I'm here to tell you that some basic tools that I'll share with you as a review are all accessible for you and whatever your quest is. And they're really, really simple. That's the kind of crazy part. In order to create things we desire, we do have to change in some way, shape, or form. And change is hard. And it's especially hard if the change has to come from someplace deep in our subconscious. That's a hard one. Well, it is until it isn't. It is until you understand more of the brain, why you are the way you are, why you think the way you think. And if the things that you think are things that you want to change, probably the patterns or habits need to be changed as well. So there's a hundred thousand ways that we can go about trying to begin that process. But I want to give you a couple of tips or reminders of things that are really easy for you. And it all begins with, again, really just infusing your, your space with positivity. So I do highly encourage really taking the time to make your home, your living environment, more accessible to you in that way, more of a positive experience. I have affirmations and quotes all over my house, not only artwork uh, that is an affirmation, but then I put sticky notes, places, and I try to write them daily and put them in places where I'm going to see them again throughout the day and constantly remember and remind myself of the positive thoughts that I would like to have on a consistent basis, that I want to switch out for those thoughts that continue to infiltrate my mind that aren't so positive. So in addition to vision boards, which I do have throughout my house, and one day we will do a vision board video together to get you guys started on your own vision board. I also have mind movies that I have on my computer and my iPhone that I watch consistently, especially when I'm traveling, especially before I go to bed, first thing in the morning. I have things like this sitting on my desk. Uh, it goes on and on. And I surround myself with these positive things so that they help me remember life is beautiful. There's no need not to be positive. Even if there are people or circumstances in your life that are trying to take you out of that positive space, remember it's up to you to choose your state of mind. So these are tools for us to remember that. Another reminder, again, are cards. Many, many different kinds of cards. These, all kinds of cards you can find, I'm certain, at any local bookstore or then, you know, our loved Amazon.com. And as part of affirmation, I always really encourage my clients to make their own affirmation cards. And I'll leave you with one today. I wrote this in 2004. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Each morning sees some task begin. Each evening sees it close. Something attempted, something done, has earned a night's repose. I love that. What's the purpose of your life? Sheesh, it's a big question, huh? 
love. Surrounding yourself with positivity will always help you find that answer and every other answer that you seek for that matter. So also, I highly recommend uh, journaling. You spend a lot of time journaling and today I'm gonna give you a journal exercise as well. If you're artistic, you know, you can have a basic journal and you can do some doodling or drawing in it. You can also put some positive affirmations or quotes in it. Um, always spend time and space in your journal with gratitude. So a little time to give thanks for the things in your life that you're grateful for. Uh, it can be any number of things and there's so many wonderful journals out there. Uh, I personally use a blank journal and I spend most of my journal time writing, but I have so many artistic friends who enjoy that creative creation space, even with journaling and having time to be artistic. So this is just one book I might suggest, or again, Googling books like it, but it's a really cool book. So every day it, it's basically a journal, but every day it gives you a journal exercise for art. Um, so a different type of journal. If, if you keep hearing me or others say, journal, 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 and you're like, oh, I don't want to journal. Um, think, of, think outside the box. What is something that you could do, sit down with every day in a journal format and start to express a little bit of your creativity, start to get in touch with your soul, start to uh, remember some of your dreams and passions. It's a really powerful tool. So please keep that in mind, right? If you have never seen or read The Secret, this is really, you know, what we talk about here on the channel. The law of attraction, manifestation, uh, getting into the right mind space to be in a creative space. And that really comes down to getting in the present moment. And uh, this is a really good resource. I think it's quite tangible. It's quite digestible for the average person who's really new to concepts of how in the world can my thoughts do anything helpful for me. Uh, they can do a lot for you, I promise. And uh, the last one I wanted to bring up today, this is a book by Susan Hayward that my mom gave to me many, many years ago, and it's called Being. Any books like this, to me, are fiercely powerful because I can open this book up to any page and I've got some really beautiful text from someone who came before me and gives me something to think about. And with all of these tools, we are left with the opportunity. It's a beautiful, precious, special opportunity to continue in our journey of self-discovery, in our journey of wholeness. And remember with every step along the way that we get to determine our mindset. It is no doubt that we go through times and experiences and events that we feel really, really out of control in that way or really devastated or sad or feel these lower base emotions and, and we feel very handicapped by them. And I'm here today to either remind you if that happens, these tools are here for you to help pull you back up to a higher base emotion like joy or happiness or love, contentment, gratitude. And the more that we work with this work, the more this work works with us. It is very synchronistic in that way. And I so delightfully invite you to participate in today's homework exercise. And that is a journal entry. So I want you to grab your journal for me. I'll give you a moment to do that. So I have countless journals that are filled up to the brim. And then I get on Amazon usually or go to a bookstore and find another inspirational journal that I want to spend time with. And um, believe it or not, I did not recognize or, or actually kind of notice my 2021 journal until the other day because the tree of life is everywhere I go on it. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. And I didn't realize it was so much everywhere in my house as well. Um, but it is. And this journal inside is blank. Um, I'll not blink anymore. 
I have my bookmark, which is my nephew's um, celebration of life. But uh, this one actually, we're, we're close to the end. I think I think I might get I might I might get the rest of the year out of this. Maybe not. But mine is blank on the inside, and I sit down lovingly each morning with my cup of coffee, and I spend time. But as I said, if you're a really artistic person, please check out something like this. Because if this gets you excited to get out of bed each morning and sit with your cup of coffee and your journal, journal it up, okay? Doesn't matter what they look like, I promise. Um, but it's a relationship with yourself that's pretty magical. And um, I really do, I, I, have, I have this struggle uh, so many of my clients, at least in the beginning, really, really, really struggled with journaling. I don't have time. I'm not interested. It's not helpful. I don't like it. I don't want to. Uh, and I look at them and I'm like, but it's so joyful. What are you doing? Why? I, what are you thinking? Many of those of you who come around to journaling later find yourselves telling me, oh my God, it's such probably the most important part of my day. It's so powerful to me. And um, I can't stress that enough. So, homework exercise. I want you to write this down today and then take time over the next few days and see if you can implement this exercise daily. Give yourself five days. Wake up 10 minutes earlier than you usually do for the next five days. And in that 10 extra minutes of time that you have before you do anything else, other than maybe get your cup of coffee. It's all I'm allowing you to do can't even remember the dishwasher, although I understand if you feel that insane need to. Ah, uh, you're not allowing it for five days. And I want you to sit in a peaceful part of your home and journal. It's, it's two parts. The first part of your journal entry each day is gratitude. And believe it or not, this is actually the most important part. So it is repetitious and that's kind of the purpose. Every day you remind yourself what you are so grateful for, what beautiful things, people, experiences do you get to savor every day? You know, what, what aspects of your health and your physical body are you grateful for? What relationships are you grateful for? What part of your job or your career are you grateful for? And remember, even if you're having turmoil, right, in a relationship or uh, you, you want a new job, right, um, by giving thanks for the things that we are thankful for, we actually, we become receptive. Uh, we, we really are in the receiving mode to receive the things that we desire. So let's say it's a job that you really want a new job, but tomorrow morning, I really hope you'll take just a moment to think about something in your present job that does make you happy, right? That does fill you with joy or that makes you feel good about yourself or makes you feel more confident uh, in, in the next career path or job that you choose. What is it that you can feel real gratitude for with your current circumstances? The second part of your journal exercise each and every single morning for the next five mornings is a place for you to create. So it may feel difficult, but once you take the time to really brain dump all the things you're grateful for, I mean, the silliest little things. I got these really cool new socks in Turkey and like, I love them so much. So I like journaled about them this morning. It could be that simple, right? Or to have a washer and dryer inside my house, you know? Um, but once you finish really filling up the paper with all the things that you can think of that you're grateful for, just take a moment between that segment of your journal entry and the second segment of your journal entry and close your eyes and try to get to a place of perfect and total stillness where your mind is empty and all you see is blackness in front of you. You get to a place where you feel like you don't have a body. You're not sitting anywhere, you're not anything. 
you're just part of consciousness. And if you can get yourself into that space of really just being, just being part of consciousness, part of everything, ask yourself each morning one question. What is it that I'm supposed to learn today? What is it that I'm supposed to understand? Or what is it that I'm supposed to do? And I want you to ask yourself one of those three questions as though you're just putting it out into the universe. And then I want you to try to feel the space around your heart and just take a moment to feel the energy there. See if you connect to any energy there. And then open your eyes and journal for a moment about it. You can't find the answers outside. You find them inside. But when we put our thoughts out into the universe, if we become open and receptive, then we, we find those answers. And we can get quiet. And part of that too is journaling. So getting your mind to an empty space and then letting your hand tell you what your thoughts have got to share with you. It's kind of magical. So I ask for you to do this exercise with me for the next five days. See how it feels. See if it feels kind of nice. Take a couple minutes each morning for yourself to get yourself in a good mind space and to also get yourself into a creation space. Gratitude and inspiration, my friends. Those are two very powerful ingredients that you really want to master. Master the skill of gratitude. Master the skill of contemplation. So this is my gift to you today. I'll be doing the exercise and I certainly hope that you'll join me. Until next time, my friends. Namaste.